please make sure you've gone through the first sections of this chapter because we're going to learn how to name and how to look at isomers. Naming. Cations are named before the anion. Everyone knows this is called sodium chloride. It's the same for any salt. When we have a ligand in a coordination complex, we'll show by example that they go in alphabetical order. We'll show by example that anionic ligands are going to end with the suffix O. We'll show by example that neutral ligands are the same as the molecule, but, and I put the two exceptions here, water is called aqua and ammonia is called amine, and note the two M's in the language. Now, naming the metals. If it's neutral or if it's a positive and it should say ion or cation, it will be the same as the metal. If instead I have an anion, I will put an A-T-E on the end of that metal name and I will use the oxidation number as a Roman numeral. So let's get started. Potassium tetracyanocuprate, where did that come from? Well, potassium is a metal, it's sitting in the cation spot. Copper is a metal, but it is sitting in the anion spot, so it gets an A-T-E, and it's a plus two oxidation state. Our ligand here is a cyano, and there are four of them. So if you see the word tetra here, we have some rules. If there are two, it is called di. If there are three, it is called tri. If there are four, it is called tetra. If there are five, it is called penta. If there are six ligands, it is called hexa. In this example, we have four, hence tetracyano, okay? First example. Second example, we have the metal cobalt. It is sitting in the cation spot. Then what we have is a number of ligands. We have the amine ligand, we have the aqua ligand, and we have the chloro ligand. They need to be put in alphabetical order, but we ignore the Greek prefix. So we're gonna see tetra, amine, A-M, then we'll see aqua, there's only one, then we'll see chloro, there's only one. So the ligands are in alphabetical order, followed by the metal sitting in the cation slot with its three Roman numeral to symbolize it's a plus three oxidation state. Now I know many of you will see the two chlorines there and you'll say, I have to do like dichloride. But remember, calcium chloride was the name of the ionic salt just like this is the name of the coordination compound, okay? The last one, once again, we have potassium. Here, we have a metal in the anion slot, so that is called nicolate. When I work it out, I see it has a plus two oxidation state. I see a cyanoligand, and then I see that oxalatoligand. Well, there are two indicated here. So if I only have one bidentate, I say bis, excuse me, if I have two bidentate, I say bis. If I have three bidentate, I say tris. If I have four bidentate, I say tetrakis. So essentially, this oxalato, there are two of them, so I will use bis as my prefix. Hate to move on, but I've gone over my limit too many times, so I have to keep moving. The second part of this is about isomers, and notice there are basically two different types, structural, that have different bonds, and stereoisomers. They have the exact same bonds, but they have different spatial arrangements. On this slide, I put all the words. On the slides that follow are pictures that relate to it. So let's start first with the structural isomers. Notice there is something called a linkage, and that is when you have a unidentate ligand, but it has two different bonds, two different atoms that can coordinate to the metal. So when I have cyano versus isocyano, 
I can coordinate either through the carbon or the nitrogen. On the next slide, you'll see the nitro versus the nitrito. And I think some are. Moving back to that slide, we also have something called a coordination isomer. That's where the ligands are going to exchange between their positions in the cation and the anion slot. An arrangement, they are called structural isomers. The second kind of isomer is a little more complicated. It is called a stereoisomer, and we have two different kinds. We have geometric and we have optical. Let's do the geometric first. Geometric is primarily cis versus trans. Cis means adjacent, trans means opposite. It can be for a four coordinate or it can be for a six coordinate. Let's move to the slide. We say cis and trans. The second type of stereoisomer you will encounter when you take organic chemistry. That is called an optical isomer. First, I'm going to go over the terms and then I'll show the picture. Non-superimposable mirror images. Another term is called enantiomer. They have something called optical activity. It is going to rotate plain polarized light. Think about sunglasses when they're polarized. They cancel out a certain kind of um, radiation. Think of that this way. If we have something called a racemic mixture, we have our enantiomers in equal isomer amounts. That will cancel out the optical activity. So if I want to separate the two, I will do something called optical resolution, and I'll show that in just one moment, but I want to use the last term, which is called chiral. Those are molecules or ions that have enantiomers. So again, one slide that has every single term about the isomer. Let's I'm going to go there. Here are our two linkage isomers. Here we see one bonded through the nitrito. Here we see one bonded through the nitro. They are different colors. Uh, the second one, the nitro, is more stable than the nitrito. Again, a lot of chemistry, but this is here to show you a linkage. Again, a picture. When I have this first platinum compound, I have two chlorines in one coordination sphere. I have four chlorines in the second coordination sphere. Yes, it's an octahedral with a square planar. In my second coordination isomer, I once again have the same um, composition, but now I have nothing in my cation slot, and I have all six anion, all six chlorines in the anion slot. Again, this is detail that if this is your area of work, you would go more into this. What we just want to show is it is a coordination isomer. So both of these isomers, they have the same composition, but a different where there is an element. And now move on to illustration. Much easier to talk about. Here are my geometric isomers. I have the one that is the six coordinate. You can see the two next to each other that are called cis. You can see the two that are across from each other or in an axial position. That is called trans. That is for the six coordinate. Here, I have the four coordinate. I have the cis. It applies to both of the groups. They are adjacent to each other or I have the trans, which are across from each other. And this platinum compound is a chemo agent and only the cis form is active, okay? So those are geometric. They are the same bonds, but a different geometric or optical isomer. The first part I have, first one I have on them, it shows here optical, and it shows your hands. Now, if we were to place a mirror in between your hands, you would see a mirror image. When we talk about superimposing, we are not bringing our hands together to clap. What we are doing is we are putting one hand on top of another. If you do that, you will notice your pinky is now with your thumb and your thumb is with your pinky. The only thing that matches is your middle finger. Think of that before we go into this. So if some material has an optical isomer, again, it is non-superimposable, 
It is the mirror image. It has the term called an antimer. And let's now probe a little bit about what is this thing called optical activity. Well, Louis Pasteur back in 1848, he used tweezers to separate the isomers of tartaric acid. Visibly, they were so big that you could put them on two piles. What he did is then he put them into an apparatus where he could measure their optical activity by looking at the angle of rotation of the plane of polarized light. It's heavy duty. You'll hear more about it in organic. But these are the terms. Anything that has optical activity has a chiral center. It rotates the plane of polarized light. We don't go this deep, but again, dextrorotatory rotates light to the right, levorotatory rotates it to the left. And antimers, those are the non-superimposable mirror images. And a racemic mixture is when you have equal amounts of the isomer. Here's some for coordination chemistry. First, look at the top two molecules. Let's say this dotted line is a mirror, and you can see reflected across is its mirror image. If I were to pick the one on the right up, I could place it right on the isomer on the left. It would just totally line up. If I looked at the second two that are on this slide, these are enantiomers. First, look at the mirror image. Notice how the chlorines are across from each other and the groups with the quote unquote ribbons are also across from each other. If I pick this isomer up and put it on top, it will not superimpose. In the Zoom video, I'll have some models, but I cannot do that here. Hit the internet, look for non-superimposable mirror images and you can watch a video. This is in coordination chemistry, but more important, organic chemistry. Here comes my real roots. We can see this in enzymes and drugs. I didn't mean to cut this out of Wikipedia, but it's interesting, okay? Limonene, that material is shown here on the right in yellow in the bottom. You can see those two structures as they have been drawn our mirror images. If you were to taste the one that has the positive sign, it would taste orange. If you would taste the one that has the negative sign, it would be lemon tasting. So that's why I'm excited. These are cool things. When you take organic next year, you will learn about D and R. You will learn about the positive and the negative. I just show it here because these are mirror images. They are optical isomers. Sitting on the right-hand side are spearmint and peppermint. Again, organic chemistry. I've recorded this so many times, I'm gonna end right now. I always go over the limit.